Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to use the sum notation to approximate the area between a function, the curve of a function, and the x-axis, as well as the bounds on the left and the right. So essentially, what we're going to do here is to graph the function, graph the x-axis, graph the uh, left and right uh, vertical lines, and determine the region. And then we are trying to approximate the area of the region by using inscribed or subscribed rectangles. And as you see in the statement of the question, we are asked to have only four rectangles. What that means is we're going to split this interval 0 and pi over 2 into four pieces. And for each piece, we're going to choose one point. And it could be either left end point or the right end point of those subintervals. And based on that, we're going to have inscribed or subscribed rectangles. Mm -hmm. Some of the areas of those rectangles is going to be the approximation of the area between the curve x axis x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. And here is the graphical outlook before we start writing the sums. Uh, as you see, the function is cosine x, the interval is 0 and pi over 2. What we did here is that we split the interval 0 and pi over 2 into four equal pieces. And, and as you see, I chose the left end of each sub-interval to construct those rectangles. All right, so for example, for this sub-interval, the left-hand side is this, the function value is all the way 1. So that means I'm going to make up a rectangle of height 1 with the base exactly that sub-interval. Okay? For the next sub-interval, as you see, I use the left end to construct my rectangle. Here we go. At this point, the function takes the value of this point, whatever that is, and my rectangle is going to come with this height and the space, obviously. Okay? For the last sub-interval, if you use the left end point, so the function value is this, so the rectangle will come with that value for, for its height. And as you see, the base is that sub-interval. All right, why don't we split the interval 0 and pi over 2 into four equal pieces. And in fact, the length of each sub-interval is going to be represented by delta x. So delta x is essentially the, the right end of the given interval minus the left end divided by the number of rectangles you're going to try to construct. So in other words, pi over 2 minus 0 divided by 4 is the length of each subinterval. So, so essentially, the length of this subinterval here, as you see, is pi over 2 divided by 4, so pi over 8. So this is essentially pi over 8, and the same thing for this one, right? So from here to here, it's pi over 8. All right, and the others are having the same uniform length. So all we're going to do here is to evaluate the function at the left and points of each subinterval. These are going to be the heights of the rectangle. So for example, for the first subinterval, the function value is going to be cosine of 0, right? Cosine of 0. So this height here. Right, this height here, let me just write it again. This height here is what cosine zero, which is which, which is exactly equal to one. You can use your calculator, but don't forget to put your calculator in the radian mode. And for this rectangle here, for this rectangle here, okay, we have the height of the value at the left end of this point, which is uh, pi over 8, right? So let me just write those down here. So 0, pi over 8, and 2, pi over 8, and 3, pi over 8. And the last one is just pi over 2, obviously, the right end of this subinterval. So here, uh, this value is going to be cosine of pi over 8. And this height here is going to be all the way cosine 2 pi over 8, right? The function value. Okay. 
for the last rectangle, let me just write it here. So this height here is going to be governed by the left hand point of this sub interval evaluated for cosine. So this is going to be cosine three pi over eight. I can go ahead and then write the area of each rectangle. So we remember that the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. All right. So the base here is pi over eight and the height is cosine zero, which is one. So the first area is going to be, let me just write those in the white zone here, pi over eight. Okay. Plus, let's put a plus sign here. Okay. And the area of the second rectangle here, the same base, because we have uniform sub intervals of length, right? So this comes with base pi over eight. And then the height is cosine pi over eight. So I'm going to write the area as pi over eight times cosine pi over eight. All right, plus. How about this rectangle here? So this comes with the base pi over eight and the height cosine, let's see, um, two pi over eight. Okay, this is two pi over eight. So pi over eight cosine two pi over eight. All right, and finally, you have the length of this, the base, of, the length of the base to be pi over eight, and uh, the height cosine three pi over eight. So the area of that is going to be pi over eight plus, sorry, pi over eight times cosine pi over eight. Okay. So the sum of the areas of these rectangles would be the approximation of the area between the blue curve, which is cosine x, x-axis. Um, x equals zero vertical line, which is the y-axis, and uh, x equals pi over two vertical line, which is in fact uh, this area below the blue curve. All right, so we should represent this sum uh, in, a, in a nicer notation. All right, I just rewrote the sum of the areas of the rectangles in a nicer form. This is the base of each rectangle, and then these are the corresponding heights of each rectangle. So if you use your calculator in radian mode, so this number is going to be close to 1.18.35. So we are asked to find the uh, the area with four decimal places, here we go.